Thank you so much and welcome to this edition of the Cancer Coach Talks. I'm your host, Leslie Nance, and tonight we're going to be talking about the opposite of negative, which we tend to think is positive, but we're going to put a new spin on that. So welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let me introduce myself super fast. My name is Leslie Nance. I am the Cancer Coach. Um, I come here on Tuesday nights, um, not the last couple of Tuesday nights because I was traveling and then, oh, just on and on and on. Anywho, um, but I come here on Tuesday nights teaching you how to make your body an inhospitable environment to cancer and to disease. And tonight, um, I think it's like the perfect timing because hello, like Thanksgiving here in the States um, to talk about um, to talk about grabbing into that, like positive mindset and that positive vibe. Um, and so that's what we're going to discuss tonight. So welcome everybody. Make sure that if you, uh, want to connect further that you check out my website, which is anystagecancer.com. Um, I am a certified holistic nutritionist, a certified holistic cancer coach. Um, and I do help people through the process of healing, understanding what healing is and how to create a healing environment in the body. So, all right, you guys. So I'm going to actually turn my camera down just a little bit. So we're not like there, that's so much better. <laughs> These little bitty adjustments, which is whatever. <laughs> Years of live streaming causes these neuroses. <laughs> <laughs> these neurotic thoughts. So, <laughs> all right, you guys, let's jump into our topic. So the opposite of negative when it comes to mindset is not positive. So many people come to me and I get on the phone with them and you might've been one of them. And you say to me, I'm, I'm staying very positive. I'm remaining very positive throughout this journey. And my question is always, where are you extending gratitude? How are you showing up with a grateful heart for even the experience of living with cancer? What? Wait, is she asking me to be grateful for cancer? Yeah, I am. I am telling you that you have choices when it comes to, to, to finding your path through healing. Rosette, that was me. <laughs> I love it. Right? Rosette was like, you want me to be what? You do know what do you want me to do? You want me to be grateful that I have cancer? It's not about being grateful literally for having cancer. It's be it's about being grateful for what cancer has come to teach you in your life the benefits, the lessons, the journey, the application of those, of those tools in your heart, in your soul. I'm so grateful for my cancer, for my cancer journey, that I would never take it back in a million years. And you've heard me say this before, possibly, but if God himself came down and said, Leslie, I'm going to give you a do-over in your life. And this time, you don't have to have cancer. Do you know what I would say to him? I'll take the cancer every single time. And the reason is, is because the lesson was so valuable. Now, just like I'm a coach, I have coaches as well. And today, actually, this morning, I was being coached by my amazing mindset coach. Her name is Jessie. She also helps me uh, with my mindset around my business. And this morning, she was coaching me. She was coaching a group of us. And she said to me, and it was so powerful, and I just took it to my heart and to my soul because somebody else recognized this in me. And she said to me, she said, Leslie, she said, you know, the gratitude that you have for your cancer is what is going to keep it away. Your journey with cancer for you personally is over because cancer came. You grabbed on to what it was here to teach you. You grabbed on to its purpose in your life by doing and helping people the way that you do. So your journey is over. The teacher is no longer needed. And I was like, yes, I say this all the time. 
And I was so excited to have that affirmation, to have that affirmative belief coming from someone else, recognizing that in me. That is gratitude. That's not me just being positive. That's not me going around, skipping around with a little, you know, a little basket and going, dee, 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 dee. I'm not going to have cancer anymore. I just know I'm not going to have a cancer anymore. That's actually finding gratitude in my journey. If you want to squash your negative belief systems, if you want to squash a lack in your life, if you want to squash overwhelm and confusion and fear and anger and guilt and sadness, the best way to do that is to extend gratitude for the journey. I'm going to tell you a little story. I'm going to tell you a little story. Here's my little story. I, you know, everybody here that knows me well, maybe you're new to me. And if you are, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, but you guys know that I am a thousand percent in love with my husband, right? Like it's ridiculous how much I love this human being. Like I cannot believe I love another human being as much as I love him. And you all know that, right? You know how close we are, what an amazing relationship we have. But there's one thing that he does that drives me absolutely freaking crazy. Rosette knows because I told her this story earlier today. <laughs> he does this thing that drives me nuts. And that is when he gets done working out, he takes his sweaty socks I love him, but I don't love him that much. I don't love him enough to love his sweaty socks. But he takes his sweaty socks, and instead of putting them right in the hamper, he lays them on our uh, on our on the side of we have a like a jacuzzi tub, and he lays them on the side of the jacuzzi tub, and he lets them dry there before he puts them in the hamper or doesn't put them in the hamper because they stay there. And every time I go into my beautiful bathroom, I have to look at his dirty socks. His They're not dirty. They're just sweaty and gross sitting on that bathtub edge. And I have a choice of how I'm going to show up as his wife and how I'm going to show up as someone who loves her bathroom and doesn't want to look at dirty socks on the bathroom tub every time I go in there. So I have a choice. I can show up angry and frustrated and just insulted almost that he would do this. Or I can extend gratitude towards the situation. And you're all like, <laughs> what does that look like? Like, what, what does that look like? I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like me looking at those socks and going, I'm so grateful. I'm so happy that I have a husband who's 20 years older than me that works out every day and has sweaty socks that can work out so hard that it even makes his socks sweaty. I am so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that he has the gumption to take care of himself like that. I'm so grateful that he has feet to put in those socks. I am so grateful that I, that he's even in my life, that I get to look at his sweaty socks on the bathroom because if they weren't there and I was used to him being there, how much would I miss them? I would just wish for one more time that he would put his sweaty socks there. I'm grateful that he doesn't put his sweaty socks into the hamper while they're wet and they sit there all week and get stinky until I do laundry again. Do you see the shift? Do you see where I step out of being frustrated and insulted and angry and, you know, and causing stress in my house? Instead, I choose to extend gratitude. I can actually find way more things that I'm grateful for in that situation then I can find things to be mad at. So my challenge for you is to start developing a belief system 
around the things that seem negative in your life. And I don't mean show up positive, like it's okay. You know, showing up positive to the sock situation would be, you know, um, would be, you know, um, um, well, one day he will learn to put his socks in the dirty clothes. I'm being positive that he's going to learn that one day. I'm pretty sure he's going to show up like that one day. And as soon as he doesn't or he fails the test, then I'm back to being angry and frustrated and mad. Right? But if I show up in gratitude and it's genuine practicing gratitude, then I get to I get to I get to have a different experience. And then I can turn it on to humor. Then I can make fun of him. Then I can then it can be a joke among friends. Then when the friends know the joke, they start giving him clean socks for his birthday. <laughs> he has a whole collection of wacky socks like that he wears with other shoes. These wacky socks because it's a joke in our house. It's become a thing of humor as opposed to being a point of contention. You can do the same thing in your cancer journey. You can have the same relationship with your cancer journey. Does that make sense? Anybody want to give me an example while I continue on? I'm going to continue on. If you can think of a personal example, type it in the comments right now of like how you're choosing to extend gratitude to a negative situation as opposed to just staying positive. Okay, I'm going to continue on as, as you guys type those things in. It's not just about feeling gratitude. It's about being in gratitude as a normal response to a crisis. Imagine somebody rear ends you at a, at a, at a stop sign, right? And it was totally not your fault. <clears throat> you had come to a complete stop. And this person was not paying attention. They were on their phone. They were texting and they ran right smack in the back of you. Right. Do you march back there and go, what the hell are you doing? What the flipping florin flack and flukin are you doing back there? What are you looking at? Or do you go back and do you say, are you OK? Oh, my goodness. Can you extend gratitude? I'm so glad that neither one of us got hurt. I'm so happy that we both have insurances and that our car is replaceable, but we're not. Do you see the difference? The old me would have gone back and said, filth, floor, and filth. That's a Bill Cosby thing, by the way. If, if you're old enough, you know what I'm talking about. The old me the pre-cancer Leslie would have gone back and said, filth, floor, and filth, what are you doing? Oh my God, are you an idiot? But the gratitude Leslie shows up in a way that says, whew, I am so glad you weren't hurt. I'm so glad that we weren't hurt. Gosh, I'm so glad you have insurance. I'm so glad nobody else was involved. Do you see the switch that happens? It disarms the negativity like a boss, right? <laughs> That's funny, Anne-Marie. <laughs> Anne-Marie says, Chris never puts his things back when he's done with tools, paperwork, et cetera. I make a joke and say, I'm your cleanup mama. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. You have a choice how you're going to show up and how you're going to respond. And if you show up in gratitude, then the anger and the frustration and the nastiness and the, the sadness and the loneliness and all those things, you they cannot coexist. If you're in gratitude, all those other things are like, we can't come in. They're knocking. I want to come in, but they're not, they cannot come in because you are working in gratitude. 
Cancer is a unique opportunity to show up in the world with grateful intentions. How about these sources of gratitude? Getting another breath, having another hour on the planet, having another day, a week, a month, a year, a decade. These are the perspectives that cancer allows in your life. Pre-cancer, I don't think I would have never thought about being lucky to just have another day. Or, or how excited I was to reach my 50th birthday. Rosette and I were talking about this today as well. How excited I was about to get to my 50th birthday. I get to be 50. Pre-cancer Leslie was pissed when she turned 40. She turned 42, she gets cancer. By the time she turns 50, which was just back in August, how exciting is that? I get to create a space and a place where I get to be 50 years old. That's amazing. That is gratitude. And when you show up like that consistently, those negativities, those negative emotions, although they will come, I'm not going to say you're going to be like, you know, happy go lucky every day. I'm just saying that they don't have as much opportunity to take root in your life. It's not just about being positive to erase negative thoughts or feelings. It's about being grateful for the lessons that the negative things that come into your life are there to teach you and extending grace and love and joy, and thanksgiving towards those, hurling at them, like just throwing gratitude at it, holding space for that in your life. John F. Kennedy says, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter the words, but to live by them. I'll read it one more time. And this is John F. Kennedy, again, if you're old like me. Um, (laughs) As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter the words, but to live by them. How are you living in gratitude? How are you showing up? Every single day. Gratitude is not something that you just write down in a journal, the things that you're grateful for. That's just thinking gratitude. Are you doing gratitude? Are you living gratitude every single day? It's not hard. In fact, it's a really comfy, cozy, amazing space to be in because you realize that there's no reason to sweat the small stuff because really there is no small stuff. Every day is a joy, is a gift, and you have the opportunity to create those wisdoms and those anchors in your life. Life is a blessing. Cancer is a blessing. Trial, tribulation, heartache, pain, they're blessings because I guarantee you, you wouldn't be half the person you are without those lessons in your life. All right. That is absolutely all I have for you guys tonight. I'm going to go read some, I'm going to go read some comments, but, um, you know, showing up, doing the work, becoming, not just doing gratitude, but becoming gratitude. It's so valuable. And I have to tell you my own life, it has changed how I do everything. It's changed how I perceive every tiny bit of my life. Thank you.